Lingnan University was founded 133 years ago in Guangzhou. It was relocated many times and finally relocated to the current Tunmun campus in 1995. Today's Lingnan is a leading liberal arts university of Asia. It is the only university that offers on-campus living to all undergraduate students in Hong Kong. Professor Leonard Chang graduated with a first-class honors degree from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. He has a master degree and PhD degree in economics from UC Berkeley. We're at Ningnan University today, and next to me is Professor Chang, president of the Ningnan University. Can you give us a brief introduction of Lingnan University, the early days when it was in Guangzhou, the early days in Hong Kong when it was at Stubbs Road, and how it became one of the eight government-funded universities uh, in Hong Kong? Thank you for your question. Lingnan University traces route to Guangzhou. In 1888, uh, there was a Christian college in China established there. And then later on, it became the Christian College in Canton. Then in 1927, uh, it changed its name to Lingnan University. Now, unfortunately, in 1952, as a result of a major policy in restructuring the university and colleges in China, Lingnan became part of Zhongshan University. We're now in Hong Kong, 1967. The alumni of the Lingnan University in Guangzhou decided to re-establish Lingnan University in Hong Kong. And the way they did it was to first establish a Lingnan College that was considered a high institution, uh, a post-secondary uh, institute that is, uh, was uh, approved by the government. Then through its hard work, uh, improved its quality, and then finally, in a very cr critical year, 1991, it became included in government funding. So that was a very critical step. Now, from 1991 afterwards, then the next step is that we move to our Truman campus today in 1995. 1999, it became a university. And a key aspect of a university is that we have the self-accreditation uh, power and standing. I should mention that around 1995, the president at that time was uh, Professor Edward Chang, and he decided to develop Lingnan College into an American style liberal arts institution, Lingnan College. Uh, but then, of course, as I said earlier, 1999, we became a university. So today, uh, Lingnan University is known as one of the leading liberal arts universities in Asia. Lingnan is a liberal arts university, and you did your master and PhD degree in UC Berkeley, famous for its engineering faculty and uh, startup incubation. How did you fit business and economics into a liberal arts college? Let me explain that there's a common misunderstanding about what is liberal arts. Now, for, to some people, liberal arts only means arts and humanities. And then to uh, some other people, they think it's arts, humanities, and social sciences. But the truth of the matter is that uh, liberal arts is much broader. Now, the word arts, when you use it by itself, it means fairly narrow, arts and humanities at most. But when we use the term liberal arts, the word arts there, has a much broader meaning. Now, Libras together, it means the type of broad-based education that were given to the three people in ancient Greece and Rome. So that is basically a way of general education, a whole person development. Ningnan is uh, uniquely located at the edge of the northern metropole, as announced by its chief executive. It's only minutes away from the high-tech area in Shenzhen. And I know Ningnan is looking into cooperation with uh, Shenzhen University. Any insight you could offer on what 
role Ling Nan might be able to play in the Twin City three circle uh, concept. Okay, thank you very much for this question because it means a lot to Ling Nan University. Um, first of all, uh, I uh, support uh, the proposal of the chief executive of developing the northern metropolis. Mm. And we are at the edge of this new area. Now, in terms of relationship with uh, the other side, and that is, uh, you know, Shenzhen mm. across the border, uh, we have signed an agreement with uh, Shenzhen University in May last, and uh, we will be developing uh, double degrees. We'll be developing, doing uh, joint research. Uh, we'll be establishing uh, joint uh, events institute, and we'll be uh, supervising PhD students together. So it's a whole range of things that are of interest to universities. Now, the exact details to be worked out, because any time you involve a degree, require approval by Senate and many other units. Now, we also actually have uh, signed an agreement with the uh, uh, Open University of Shenzhen, mm. uh, primarily for them to feed students into our uh, programs. Uh, but of course, there's also room for collaboration between our side and their side, because besides the university proper, Lingnan University proper, we also have the live Lingnan Institute of Further uh, Education. And uh, we have also uh, reached agreement with other universities in the region outside Shenzhen, such as, uh, you know, the um, Southern University of Science and Technology um, and, uh, and, and Dr. Sun Yat-sen University, the one that we mentioned at the beginning, mm. that, you know, into which Lingnan University in Guangzhou was subsumed. So basically, we like to do things together uh, so as to make, contribute better to this region. Now, coming back to the northern metropolis, uh, I think uh, we like the idea that in this area, we'll develop, uh, the government will promote and develop industry that are connected to technology. So it'll be innovation and technology. That is your technology. broader vision. Uh, that's the broader vision, not because we have an engineering school, mm. but because they will provide many opportunities for our students as well. Mm. Now, even though we don't have, in, uh, we, we, we don't have uh, an engineering school, we actually encourage our students to develop their entrepreneurship mm. and innovative spirit. So, in fact, uh, we have something here that is related to technology but not advanced technology. Uh, we have something called um, humanitarian technology, mm. uh, which is about applying mature technology, existing te technologies uh, for solving problems that have been ignored. Uh, and usually these problems are faced by the underprivileged, and that's why they may have been ignored. So I'm, I'm just giving an example, because we let our students to actually work with students from the, uh, at the other universities, at the Science and Technology University, because we all know very well that uh, for the for, for, for the high-tech companies, uh, they require not just technicians. They require not just engineers. They also require employees who can bring to them the uh, humanity side and the social science side. And commercialization. And school. commercialization. As well. Because everything is needed for a product to be really meeting the general needs of the potential users, potential customers, but also in a way that is... Uh, uh, you know, well presented, so it attracts the attention of the consumers. Right. So I'm very hopeful that we'll be able to play a role and contribute to Hong Kong. And through the linkages that I described to you early on, with institutions on the other side of the border, contribute though also to the greater Bay Area.